Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, welcome again, Administrator Pruitt and Ms. Screevy. Uh, I want to tell you that I'm a little bit concerned also about the impact of the Mulvaney budget on the efforts to clean up the Great Lakes and leverage them as an economic asset for our region. I say that in, in jest for Mr. Mulvaney, having been, <laughs> having been a former member. <laughs> uh, for example, in my home state of Ohio, three million people receive their drinking water from Lake Erie, and tourism along the lake generates uh, more than $14 billion in spending annually and nearly 125,000 jobs. Forty million tons of cargo are shipped annually through the Ohio's eight federally authorized ports on the Lake Erie. We see these types of benefits in other states that border on the Great Lakes, and for this reason our Great Lakes delegation has strongly supported the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. This program has been highly successful, it is facilitating collaboration among our states and the federal government, local communities, and industry, and is making real progress in solving some of the most serious problems facing our lakes. It is also helping communities revitalize degraded waterfront areas, creating jobs and new economic development. For example, in my district, cleaning up the contaminated <coughs> sediments in the Ashtabula River allowed for the return of normal commercial act shipping and recreational boating and sustained the economic viability of the city's port. For us, cleaning up the Great Lakes isn't just about correcting mistakes from the past, but creating new opportunities and a brighter future for our shoreline communities. The President's budget, <coughs> sorry, I misspoke there. The Mulvaney budget, if enacted, would cripple our collective e efforts, halt the progress we are making, and undermine the investments we have made to date. Funding under the GLRI has been instrumental in, in uh, implementing costly cleanup projects such as the Ashtabula River. Simply put, this work wouldn't happen without federal support, which has leveraged financial contributions from states, industries, and communities. For example, more than 40 percent of the cost of the contaminated sediment cleanups has been provided by non-federal partners. This money will be left on the table, and many cleanup projects will not move forward if the GLRI is eliminated. In addition, the bulk of our efforts to prevent the introduction of the Asian carp would cease and targeted nutrient reduction actions would not be possible, likely resulting in millions of pounds of phosphorus entering the Great Lakes and contributing to harmful algal blooms. It is clear that funding is vital to the sustain and effective fate, federal, state, and local partnership to restore the Great Lakes. However, equally important is the EPA's role as coordinator of the overall restoration program. For federal leadership is indispensable in addressing problems that cut across state and national borders coordinating work among multiple federal, state, and tribal agencies, providing technical support, establishing science-based goals, and managing binational bi efforts with Canada. EPA has played this role over the past several years and has been key to the success of the GLRI. Can you explain to us how, this, how these functions will be maintained if the GLRI is eliminated? Well, you've said it well, and thank you for your comments uh, and, and your summary. Uh, this body, uh, for a number of years, has recognized the importance of the initiative. And uh, we at the agency have recognized that as well. And as we start in this process and continue the process, we look forward to working with you to address the objectives, uh, the uh, water quality objectives, and you mentioned the invasive species as well. We want to make sure uh, that the state's affected uh, the commerce that's a part of the Great Lakes uh, is, is preserved, and we address that going forward in this budget. Will the Great Lakes Interagency Task Force and Great Lakes uh, Ad Advisory Board be maintained? I, I think, Congressman, as, as, as we go through this, I think what's important is to recognize the priority uh, of the initiatives that, that have been historically uh, prioritized by this body. We are going to work with you to ensure that those pri priorities are addressed in whatever form it takes. Will the cost-share approach to cleaning up the contaminated sediments uh, under the Great Lakes Legacy Act uh, continue? You know, I think that um, from a state perspective, you know, we've talked to many of the governors uh, that uh, are impacted uh, by the, this, these issues, and we are engaged in discussions with them on how we can have a shared approach, a more vibrant shared approach. Uh, but, but as far as the funding that has been proposed to be reduced and or eliminated under this budget, I'll just echo what I've already shared with you, Congressman. We, we recognize the importance of the Great Lakes. We recognize the importance of, uh, to the citizens in that region, and we're going to work with Congress to assure that those objectives are obtained. You can appreciate the fact that your agency has provided the leadership in what I think is the way government should work. Agencies all working together on a common goal, sharing their information and getting to an end result. And the, uh, the money that we've got there, it, it was needed for a, over a period of years. And last year, in the Word of Bill, we managed to pass $300 million for five years so that the agencies won't have to worry about the stop-start approach of having to, you know, not know what money's coming in next year, so why start the research this year? That's moved us backwards. From the 70s, 
to where we're at now, the Great Lakes has made tremendous difference in, in, in your leadership or your agency's leadership in that it is a tantamount to making it happen. I think you said it well in your, in your summary and your comments. It's it, the money, but it's also the facilitation. It's the coordination that the agency has provided historically to each of those interested parties, those stakeholders, both private as well as states. And that's important that we recognize that and continue it. Well, simply put, the uh, Mulvaney budget uh, appears to largely remove the federal government as a partner in, in all our work to resolve and manage the Great Lakes. Is that fair? Uh, I think there are, are, are functions that the agency can perform uh, outside of, uh, again, the funding and appropriations. We've cited some of those. Um, uh, as an example, the Chesapeake Bay TMDL, you know, that's, a, that's an example of states coming together to address non-point source and the agency provided leadership and management and facilitation uh, in that area. I think that's similarly true to the Great Lakes area as well. Uh, m obviously money is important, but I think this leadership role is important as well and that's going to continue. Well, you know, and it's not just the lake area of which we're proud. Uh, uh, Congresswoman Kaptur, I'm sure, will be following up with some questions on you regarding this. But the Great Lakes, I don't view it as just a, a lake or a series of lakes. I view it as a national treasure, obviously. And so given the national significance of the Great Lakes, is it fair to expect the states and local communities to shoulder the, the burden of caring for them? We, we view those uh, states as partners and stakeholders. And we'll continue to view them in that fashion as we go forward. And, and uh, it's important that we facilitate, show leadership. Uh, but work with each of those stakeholders to achieve the good outcomes. Well, I appreciate you moving me up in line, Mr. Chairman. I know I have exceeded my time. Thank you very much for your time here. Thank you.